So you actually left your narcissistic partner. I applaud you because that's one of the hardest decisions to make and even harder to pull it off because of the dynamics within a narcissistic relationship. So in this video, I give you nine things you can work on to heal from the trauma of that relationship. I think number eight is not just a something to work on, but it's also a good barometer for how far along you are in your process. Number one is understanding what happened to you. And under that category, I include things like educate yourself on narcissistic personality disorder, on narcissistic traits and behaviors and dynamics within narcissistic relationships so you can make sense of your experience. And then acknowledge the abuse, whether emotional or physical abuse, abuse is abuse and it causes damage. So acknowledging the abuse opens the door for healing. Um, then acknowledge your emotions, which will be a mess because you have moments of self-doubt, regret, reminiscing the good parts of the relationship. Um, you'll wonder whether or not that was the right decision to make. You'll hate them. You'll miss them. You will feel uh, relieved that you're not with them. Then you'll miss them again. So things will get crazy. You'll feel sad, angry, frustrated at times. You might feel anxious because of the abuse and the manipulation kind of causes almost like a PTSD. So you might wake up in the middle of the night and be like stressed out and still think you're there. So it will be an emotionally turbulent time for you post relationship. And that's normal and that's okay. Don't try to distract yourself from the emotions or try to shove them under the rug. Just acknowledge them. Okay, I'm sad. I'm angry. You are a human being. This is normal. Uh, but one thing not to do is try to figure out the logic behind their actions. So naturally, our minds want to solve the puzzle. Why did they do what they do to me? Like, what did I do to them? So from the perspective of feeling like unfairly treated, unfairly mistreated, I should say, you're going to want to figure out the logic behind their actions. But there isn't none. There, they're not doing this logically. It's a twisted world they live in. That's the narcissistic world. And it's based on deep self-loathing and low self-esteem and the need to be in control and in power and all that stuff. So there's no logic behind it. You're going to just waste a bunch of time that you could be using to work on your own healing. To create distance. And that means... Physically, literally, just create distance. Either go totally no contact or minimize contact as much as possible when it's impossible to be no contact. Like you have kids together, businesses together, houses together. You're still going through divorce, so you need to talk to each other, whatever. But try to minimize contact or just no contact at all because you need the space, the serenity of your own space without their constant input and interference then remove all triggers so pictures from the wall things they gifted you uh, just get rid of all these things go through your phone delete the pictures go through your social media scrub it clean you don't want reminders of this person especially early on in the healing process the triggers will be way too uh, powerful and will cause you to be more emotional and will cause you to reminisce more, to question your decision more. Maybe you'll feel more lonely. It may cause you to relapse. So number three in that category is no matter what, don't go back. <laughs> when you create distance, that means never go back. No matter how you feel, if you feel like you miss them, acknowledge that you miss them, don't do anything about it. Don't act on it. Don't text them. Don't call them. Don't talk to them. Trust me, it will pass. Call a friend if you need to. Um, if you go back to them, it will screw you up in two different ways. One, they will hold that against you. Always. They will know that you are weak. They will treat you as if you are weak. And you'll suffer more for it. And on the subjective side of it, 
you will know that you are weak and you will trust yourself less and you will be more manipulatable. So, terrible idea. Do not go back. Then, three, focus on self-care. Rebuild your identity. Find the things you like. Find your hobbies, your interests, your career path. Practice self-compassion. So in moments when you're weak and falling apart, instead of criticizing yourself, behold yourself with compassion. Treat yourself like you would a dear friend. Um, remind yourself that you just went through a lot and give yourself credit for being able to leave, for wising up and being strong enough to leave. Focus on your physical health because as you feel better physically, you're stronger emotionally. Um, then deliberately, deliberately do nice things for yourself. So get that massage, you know, go on that retreat, spoil, spoil yourself a little bit. Um, it's kind of like self-indulgence, self-care, um, but you need it because you know best what you need, give it to yourself. Then even things like completely clearing out your wardrobe and buying new clothes, changing your hairstyle, like total makeovers, if you can afford it. But, you know, there's cheap options like the secondhand store. Because all those things that... that you were or you wore or you used while you're in the relationship subconsciously become triggers and constantly keep you invisibly emotionally tethered to the person and the relationship with them and also you'll feel really good if you do a makeover you'll get a new look you'll get a new sense of self uh, it's kind of fun to go shopping uh, maybe you'll get a bunch of compliments, all that stuff. So seek support. And that could be professional support from therapists. And I, yeah, that's important. Therapists, coaches, whatever. Because in the beginning, these professionals know what you're going through. And they know the remedies. Uh, but also friends and family, they can be good emotional support. Um, support groups. They're amazing because you get to hear your experience coming out of somebody else's mouth and it will validate your experience. It will validate your feelings. You won't feel so crazy. It'll be, you'll be less likely to doubt your own story. Um, and a lot of support groups are free and therapists are not. Uh, learn, uh, yeah, lean on friends, lean on, on um, family members. Uh, even if they're not that skilled with other things, they can be good resources for you to get your life back together. Um, then number five, rebuild trust. And the first kind of trust you need to rebuild is trust yourself. Because you just went through a relationship with a narcissist who completely devalued and degraded your sense of self and cause you to doubt every single thing about yourself. So there's a lot of work to be done to rebuild trust in yourself. Um, so you can trust your own judgment again. And to do that, you start noticing when you're making decisions and they turn out well, you go, yeah, I made the right decision. So you build self-efficacy. Um, and you start by making small decisions. And slowly, slowly, you build the muscles to make bigger decisions um, then slowly rebuild relationships with friends and family because chances are your narcissistic partner isolated you and you lost touch or you because of shame and guilt you stop communicating or stop seeing them as much so this is a good time to rebuild those connections and rebuilding those relationships makes you feel stronger because now you're going to have a support network. And then make new relationships. So that's a little tricky. You don't want to go new intimate relationships right away. 
um, almost like uh, equal and opposite reaction <laughs> to the situation. Like you don't want to go wild off the deep end immediately. Um, that's just going to complicate your situation and then you'll feel worse about yourself. But what you can do is make new friendships. You can be a better partner. You can be a better friend. And then when you feel like, okay, you are somewhat along your healing journey and you're less stressed, not so emotional, not so insecure, maybe you can start exploring some other relationships. Um, but for now, just focus on building healthy connections, healthy um, new friendships. Anyway, number six, um, address the trauma. So you went through no doubt a traumatic experience and the longer you in the relationship, the more beaten down you are. So you need to address that trauma. So what is it? It's like you don't trust anybody, uh, you don't feel loved, um, you're super anxious, um, you're insecure in how you talk to people. So how is that trauma shaped you? You need to address all this. But not only because somehow that narcissist picked you out of everybody to have a relationship with you and they're really good at picking their victims. So what in your past prior to that relationship set you up for this? Um, was there any trauma in, in your childhood, neglect, mistreatment, abandonment, um, was there any trauma from previous relationships? Maybe you were with somebody else before who beat you down in some other way. So you need to address all this to make yourself healthier because otherwise you just bring all that to the next person, to the next relationship. So number seven is empower yourself. Um, and one way to do that is set new goals for your health, for your career, for your life. Um, and you have something to look forward to instead of constantly looking back on what you lost by quitting the relationship. And then develop new skills. Obviously, if you have new goals, you might have to learn new things. Skills like maybe communication skills, maybe actual physical skills related to your job or whatever. You will build more self-confidence, which you will desperately need since the narcissist in your life makes sure you have none. So practically, uh, practice assertiveness and you can practice that with your friends with your family with your co-workers you learn what it is to be assertive and then you practice and you're not going to be so good at first and then you'll get better the more you practice because that will set you on a better course for future relationships and and it will prevent other people from taking advantage of you and making you feel worse you already feel bad from your relationship with your narcissistic partner and now other people are taking advantage of you and you're just thinking, God, I, everybody's taking advantage of me. But if you learn how to be assertive, you can eliminate all that. Um, and then um, hand in hand with this goes set boundaries. Learn how to set boundaries. And again, you can do that with your friends, family, coworkers, anybody, people on the street, like certain things I do not tolerate. So learn to set boundaries and then stick to your boundaries because it's one thing to set a boundary and it's another thing to defend the boundaries so two more to go so this was number seven two more to go um how are we doing so far like this video hit the thumbs up comment down below and even more gratitude if you subscribe <laughs> okay number eight let's not delay this number eight the one I told you that it's not just a thing to do, but also a good barometer of how you're doing, how far along you are in your healing process. Number eight is forgiveness and letting go. And that includes forgiveness towards yourself because you're going to need it. You're going to, you're very experienced at self-blaming. The narcissist in your past relationship trained you to turn everything towards yourself and always blame yourself for everything so you're gonna blame yourself for ruining the relationship and all kinds of other crazy stuff so forgiving yourself for the shame for the self-blame for the self-neglect um like i said earlier like treat yourself like a trusted dear friend just acknowledge the fact that you know 
you did the best you could under the circumstances and now you can do better so forgive yourself but also let go of the resentment towards the other person because that's in the mix as well like okay i wasted all this time on this person i waste all these years in this relationship um i hate what you did to me you made me feel like a wreck um so all that resentment you need to let go of it and to do that you have to forgive the narcissist and forgiving doesn't mean you just say okay whatever i'm good with that what it means is um you let go of their power over you of their invisible power emotional power over you so when you start thinking how do you know you've let go and you've forgiven them is when you remember them and you remember the events of your relationship and it's just information it's not triggering intense emotional reactions from you you are just deciding literally deciding that they'll have zero power over you um, and you move forward from there so depending on how strong you feel in your resolve that's how you know how far along you are in the healing process and this probably take time so that's number nine be patient because the healing process takes time and it's not a linear time where you're like better 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 it's gonna be up and down and so hopefully over time the ups and the downs are kind of starting to level out and it's more up than down <laughs> and so you want to feel um yeah you want to feel like you're patient with yourself so you can't rush it along and then celebrate your progress so whenever you catch yourself better whenever you catch yourself feeling good about yourself or more confident or more competent or more skillful or more emotionally stronger you notice that moment and you go yes yes you pat yourself on the back acknowledge those moments those little victories celebrate um celebrate let's say a year post relationships like yeah one year of freedom two years of freedom kind of like an alcoholic celebrating sobriety <laughs> take all the compliments people give you don't go like oh no you know be shy somebody tells you, you look great you're smart they appreciate the work you did the competence the help yeah bring it on pat yourself on the back celebrate all that's going to help you build confidence it will help you restore your sense of self-worth okay that's total nine. Thumbs up if you like this video. Subscribe if you want more. And thank you for watching.